Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to install a switch in this truck to control the engine fan so you can turn it on and off manually. A lot of trucks don't come with them. It's not too hard to install one. Uh, there is different ways you can do it. Uh, I chose to do it the way I'm doing it because it's the least intrusive and then I don't have to deal with the electrical uh, if there's ever a problem and it's very easily undone in case I choose to do that. So I got this switch here and I bought some push connect fittings for it. We're going to put them on. Then I got 15 feet of airline, quarter inch, and some quick push connects here. I went with the brass rather than plastic. It's a little better. And uh, we're going to tap into the fan clutch solenoid here and run a line into the cab to the switch and back out, uh, out of the cab. So I'm going to get some stuff together here and I'll get started. Welcome to the channel, yeah, do it yourself, semi, come hey, yo, on. Hey yo, DIY, semi, yeah. come on, won't you let me, yeah. help you set the fire, what you like me, you like hey me. yo, DIY, semi, yeah. come on, won't you let me, yeah. help you make a profit, yeah. like me, yeah, we gon' break it down, break it down, come on, make a profit, break it down, break it down, simplify, don't stop it, break it down, break it down, come on, make a profit, break it down, break it down. All right, sorry for the wind. It is pretty windy out today. Just gonna give you a better close-up of, of this switch. Uh, there's some threads in there. We're going to thread some fittings in there. And on your trucks here, if you look at your airline, your bunch of airlines and stuff here, to the, where they go up into the cab, it's behind this coolant reservoir. I'm not gonna be able to get the camera in there to show you. But if you follow them up to the firewall, you should have some extra plugs in there. They might be plugged with rubber or they might be open. Uh, if they're plugged with rubber, we can pull them plugs out from the inside. Uh, so, look way up in there, okay? Like I said, not going to be able to see it. And uh, what I'm going to do is I had one that was open, one had a rubber plug. I pulled the rubber plug out. So I'm going to take the air lines from the inside of the cab and fish them outwards. It's kind of a tight spot, but it's not going to be too bad. All right, so I got this dash taken apart already. Yes, I know my truck is dirty. I don't care at this very moment. Uh, if you don't know how to take these dashes apart in the Columbia, you pull this cup holder up, then everything else becomes pretty evident. You got screws here, here, all around, your gauge cluster, a couple over here. But once you pull this cup holder out, it'll become pretty evident what you need to do. All right, so. You pull your gauge cluster out and you see this metal pipe I got here. That's just to move them lines a little bit. But down in there, shoot, I don't know if I can get the camera in there or not. Way down under these lines here, I got two holes. So I can fish some line through there just perfectly. So I'm going to do that. And then we'll come back, I'll show you. We'll hook it up on the outside first and then we'll come and finish up the inside. And then uh, we'll show you how to set it up. Now, if you don't have these holes, you're gonna have to drill somewhere or find a hole somewhere that'll suit your purpose. If you got a drill through this firewall, be very, 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 very careful. You don't wanna drill through something and check the inside, the outside, take measurements, reference points, do what you gotta do, but just be very careful. All right, you can see I got these two lines here fished up through the firewall. And this is gonna be my line going into the cab. And where I'm gonna put, slice that in is right here at this solenoid. So I need two hands, I gotta set the camera down a second. And I forgot to bleed air out of the system, but it'll be all right. I'll see, there we go. All right. So we will, I'll get rid of all this extra line in a minute. You always want to give yourself some extra here. All right, we got that. Just gonna feed this line up out of the way, make it a little neater right away. It's nice this fitting pivots. 
so we don't have to turn a 90 degree corner or anything. We just pivot that fitting. Okay, that line in is, is uh, taken care of and secure. Now, this other one here, we're gonna make this one the line coming out of the cab. So, all I need to do is take one of these quick fittings here and splice it on the old line. Make sure she's good and tight. Then we'll splice on the new line. There. We'll check all this for leaks when we're done. Now I got all this slop here. I'm just going to pull it through from the cab side and then zip tie it up to my other uh, airlines here that were already with the truck. So I'm going to do that quick before we move on. And then essentially we're done under the hood here until it's time to test it out. Just before we move along, I mentioned that this was easy to undo should you ever want to. All you'd have to do is unhook this and unhook it back up here from the solenoid. Just plug this right back into the solenoid and you're, uh, you're good to go. It's just back to the way it originally was. Those other extra lines can just hang there. They're not being used until such time as you take care of your problem or whatever your reason was. Now I just need to take these uh, push connects and thread them into the, uh, into the switch here. This switch kind of takes up a lot of space, so on, on the back side. So I'm going to be kind of limited on where I can mount it on the dash, but I left myself plenty of air line. So if I need to run it, wherever I need to run it, we can certainly do that. Okay, that's what it's going to look like when we're done. Just a toggle switch. All right, I ended up drilling my hole over here, left of the steering column because I have all kinds of clearance behind here. There's really nothing behind here. So this, uh, this switch can sit in here like this. It's gonna take up a lot of space. So I'm going to fasten this switch in here. And then if you look at the, uh, the toggle switch here, this is the line in. Okay, this is, this is the line in. And this is the line out. So this one here is my line in. I'm going to hook that here. Line out here. I'll set this up. And then we'll test it. See if she works. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. You can see the fan is not running. It is spinning, but that's parasitic draw. So got my switch down here. I'm gonna flip it and let's see what happens. Bingo, it works. So basically, here we'll switch it off. Fan shut off. Basically what we did here is we tapped into the solenoid and we kind of made it a manual solenoid or automatic. When we flip the switch, it takes away the air which engages the clutch. Let's do it again. So right now air is supplied to the clutch. So it's disengaged the fan. I'm gonna flip the switch cut off the air and there we go fan on so it's not an on off situation we created with the switch it's an on or automatic switch so now that the fan is off it's automatic the truck is controlling it and then when we flip it the other way uh, we've created a, a, a locked in fan on situation we don't ever want to create a situ situation where we lock the fan off because uh, if, it, if it needs the fan and, and it doesn't have it and you overheat the truck, you got engine damage. So, once again, uh, when you drill here, just uh, make sure that you have proper clearance behind, plenty of clearance. Leave yourself enough air line so that when you gotta pull this instrument cluster, you, uh, you have the, the 
the extra hose to do that and uh, tidy things up under the hood with zip ties. I'm going to tidy up with some zip ties back here, button it all back up. When I'm done, I'm going to come back. I'll show you before I put everything together on this dash, if you have a Columbia or a Cascadia, how to go about taking this apart. All right, guys, we're all done here. Uh, I just forgot to say that uh, that switch that is just a air toggle switch with quarter inch push connect fittings on it. And then I got that at Fleet Pride. It was about 35 bucks. So it's really not that bad. Uh, bought 25, I don't know, 15 or 25 feet of airline. I don't remember. That was probably 15 bucks or so. And then uh, just those fittings. I used uh, those two little fittings I screwed into the toggle switch were six bucks a piece. And then that quarter inch push connect that I spliced down in the engine compartment was eight bucks. And I think that's all I bought. Yeah, pretty sure. So anyway, if you have a Columbia or a Cascadia, all you gotta do is it all starts right here. You just pull this cup holder out and then these two screws, this thing pops off and then you just work your way around. This thing will just, it's just sitting in there. It's not even attached. And then you got all the way around here. So just, once you get this out, everything will become apparent. And then it just, just snaps back in. These things aren't even screwed in. Oh, I got it in crooked, but I'll fix that. And then over here on this toggle switch. Yeah, I know I got a little bit of crooked. Don't bother me, but I'll straighten it out. There's a, a finger protector that can go over here to keep you from bumping it. Just like this one I got here for my airbags. See, if I bump it with my knee, I don't hit the switch. I installed that airbag dump after the fact I didn't have a dump switch in here. So I just installed that. Much the same, it's the same kind of switch as I did for this over here. So anyway, that's a pretty clean install. And the reasons I didn't do it electrically is because on the new trucks, they're really really sensitive to voltage and current. And the last thing I want to do is create another possible freaking problem. Those trucks have enough problems. Uh, I don't need to go looking for electrical problems. This truck wouldn't be so bad. It's not that touchy. But if you got like a brand new truck or something, uh, well, it should have a, a switch in it. But a lot of them don't, the fleet trucks and stuff. So you can add one. And then, too, if you have a brand new truck, like even a Kenworth or a Pete, Ask at the dealer because sometimes they're wired in, but there's just not a switch. You, you get, it's extra for the switch, but some of the wiring harnesses are standard and you'll just have a dead plug behind your panel here and you could just buy the switch and plug it in and there you go. So ask at the dealer if, if you're pre-wired for a switch. And the reason I didn't tap into the ground is much the same as, as the hot side, you know, uh, if the solenoid sending a signal, but then there's no ground, I just don't want to create. It'd probably be just fine, but why create problems? This this install is so clean and worry-free. If you have an air leak, you can find it and fix it, and then that's the end of it. Air leaks are easy to deal with. So anyway, I just want to explain a little bit why I did it this way, and uh, you feel free to do it any way you want. That's just the way I did it, and uh, take care. We'll see you next time.